Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. This is a new installment of Inspiration Information a series that I do on and off about either a book or a, um, a series or a podcast that inspired me to dig back into my collection um, and um, you know it's taken me in, um, onto a musical tangent of sorts and this week the, uh, the book I want to talk about is um, Indian Sun, uh, The Life and Music of Ravi Shankar which was written by a London-based journalist, journalist uh, Oliver Krask, and published a couple of years ago. This is a wonderful book. It's very detailed, very comprehensive. Oliver Krask actually got to meet Ravi Shankar um, before he died in 2012, so it's a more intimate account of his life. It was very, very interesting to learn about not only about Ravi Shankar and you know the life he devoted to sp spreading. Um, Indian classical music throughout the world by uh, relentlessly touring and 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 teaching and lecturing and the man was just he he didn't stop pushing forward the uh, the um, his musical style and and put Indian music on the world map. I mean, really, truly, absolutely, uh, a, a real visionary, a real genius, um, and. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, so Ravi Shankar, just a little potted story for you. He was um, born in 1920 in uh, Varanasi, uh, Benares, as it was called then, a very uh, holy uh, city in northern India. Um, and um, he was one of five brothers. His older brother, uh, Uday, Uday Shankar, was a phenomenally gifted uh, dancer. And he was... Um, um, so I'll just show you a picture there. This is Uday Shankar. And um, he would uh, perform throughout the world, especially in Europe. And age 10 or thereabouts, uh, Ravi uh, got to move to Paris um, because he was part of the, the dance troupe, basically. Uh, Ravi was also a very, very uh, gifted dancer himself. And that was his first access to the arts or the Indian arts is through dancing. His parents passed away very early on and aged 18 in 1938. He decided to return to India to be taught uh, the sitar by a master, a guru, Baba Alodin Khan, which there we go. Baba Khan is there in the middle. And Baba Khan is the father of Ali Akbar Khan, uh, who is the great master of the Sarod uh, and uh, Ali Akbar Khan and Ravi Shankar were pr pretty much like brothers studying 10 to 12 hours a day under a very rigorous and strenuous um, tra training regime but at the end in 1944 uh, Ravi Shankar came out of his training a master musician obviously and that's where we started spreading the, the craft of Indian music. Now, I want to talk about Indian music a little bit. Um, Indian classical music, because that's what we're talking about here. It's not Bollywood. We're not talking about, we're talking about solely about Indian classical music. Anyway, um, Indian music is divided into two different kinds of schools. There's uh, Hindustani, which is North Indian classical music, and Carnatic music, which is South Indian uh, classical music both of them share similar traits the instruments may vary slightly like for example the sitar the sarod are more uh, sort of north indian uh, ba uh, bass instrument the veena is probably more used in the south but effectively the system of nodes uh, the ideas of raga and tala which i'm going to talk about are very present in both systems now raga uh, Tala is easy to explain, you know, when, when you listen to a Ravi Shankar record, like this one, for example, and this is a great example, I just start with Ravi Shankar, and this is the, the sounds of India, if you want to understand Indian music, get yourself a copy of this album, because there's an introduction to, the, to Indian music, and Ravi talks about, you know, the various aspects, so Tala is the rhythmic cycle, uh, so Tala is the, the division of beats in in uh, in a you know in a musical 
in a musical piece. Um, and so often you'll get some very common time division like tintal, which is like 16 beats, four, 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 four. Or sometimes they use ectal, which is um, uh, 12 beats, which is four, four, two, two. So the division is the division of the bars in the in the raga. Now the raga itself is more difficult to explain because it's a it's a complex musical structure of fixed notes, but these notes may be um, used in various different orders when the improvisation cycle begins. The guy who wrote the book says that you could explain raga like a set of stairs that if you come, it says stairs straight, but when you come down, it may start zigzagging, uh, but they're the same stairs. Um, and, you know, or you may pause at a stair in, a stair in contemplation. And that's a very non-Western concept um, because with Western classical music, the piece is written that way. And the notes are there, and you know, if you take, for example, my favorite classical piece, which is the uh, the the cello concerto by uh, Dvorak, I've got tons of versions of, of that piece, and they all more or less follow the same rhythmic pattern, and sound, and everything, and notes. But with a raga, depending on who's playing it, there might be a lot of variation, and improvisation improvisation is very strong in raga. So. Difficult to explain, but in any case, uh, listen to the music. That's what matters the most. So this is highly recommended. The first, um, the, the very first uh, album that was published under uh, Ravi Shankar's name is Three Ragas. That's from sometime in the 1950s. I don't know exactly the dates. Um, so Three Ragas are... It says in the book that he knew, like he could recall 250 different ragas. He, he knew them, like I'd practiced so so many of them that he could play 250 and he created himself, you know, I don't know, a number of them. You've got to understand with Indian music as well, Indian classical music is a very microtonal music. Um, it, it, the the notation, notation system is very different and you've got micro notes which don't really exist in, in the western system but anyway digressing this is a wonderful album uh, featuring Sh Chatur Lal on tabla now Chatur Lal features er in in early um, Ravi Shankar records but then his his tabla player of choice would become uh, Ala Raka who is the father of uh, Zakir Hussain and Ala Raka is one of the greatest percussionists ever and really is so gifted um, anyway, this is very highly recommended. Um, then, uh, uh, improvisations. This is this is a very interesting record in the sense that it features a cast of uh, Western and non-Western musicians. It's a kind of a crossover record. It's got um, Bud Shank on flute, um, Gary Peacock on bass, and Louis A's on drums, and the the Indian uh, musicians. Um, include obviously Ravi on sitar he has Nodu Mulik on tempura and so when 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 Ravi plays uh, a raga typically there's at least most of the time three musicians there's a tabla player there's him and there's a tempura player and tempura is a drone string instrument it's kind of like a double bass of Indian classical music it just gives you this kind of like you know deep draw in the background just to explain what's interesting about this it's uh, a theme for Pata Panchali Pata Panchali is a the first of a series of three movies the Apu trilogy classic Indian movies from the 1950s which was scored by Ravi Shankar uh, Ravi in 1944 or 45 moved moved to New Delhi and took a position as musical director for the All India Radio uh, which uh, is um, you know the, ma the major broadcaster and as musical director he got these kind of opportunities to actually just work on different projects and Pata Panchali is a classic Indian story which was made into a movie and became a blockbuster and that theme from Pata Panchali is just a lovely lovely um, piece of music anyway just digressing 
it's a really nice record and if you come across it uh, don't hesitate um, here is Chapaca uh, Chapaca also is also a music uh, a film soundtrack um, it's a Conrad Conrad Rooks uh, experimental movie uh, Conrad Rooks asked Ornid Coleman to score this movie but the the he found the, 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 the musical score too jarring and too... He just thought... So there's two soundtracks for it. You can get the... Uh, the there's also the version by Ornid Coleman. That's fantastic. And you think, you think about the same movie, one scored by Ornid Coleman, one scored by Ravi Shang. It's, it's amazing. Like. But with this one, um, this was scored with the help of Philip Glass. So this is the first collaboration uh, between Ravi and Philip Glass. Now... This is the thing with Ravi Shankar. There's a lot of crossover collaboration that we're going to talk about. Yehudi Menuhin, George Harrison, obviously, um, and and Philip Glass was a great friend of, uh, and so he he travelled to Paris and um, Philip Glass helped scored this uh, uh, score uh, this and it, the results are just really phenomenal, beautiful record. Um, here is a record that's a bit off kilter very experimental uh, uh transma transmigration macabre uh, this is where ravi started to just go sort of like off track a bit and and try to and try different things and and, and try to incorporate um more esoteric sound into into his uh, into his music and this is a great example um this is this is more in Indian classical music for Western ears, you know, with a, a distinct kind of uh, Eastern psychedelic flavor. Um, okay, um, here is. So he published a, a few records uh, on Deutsche Grammophon. Um, and this is one of them, uh, homage to Mahatma Gandhi and Baba Alodin. I was talking about Baba Alodin. Uh, Baba Alodin Khan was his guru, uh, and he, he he learned he learned the sitar from him. Uh, and uh, so on this, uh, you do have uh, the homage to uh, um, so yeah, Tintan and El Ektar. I was talking about those. Uh, so when you see something like Alap, Jaw, um, uh, Jala, uh, and Gat, uh, just so that you can understand what that means. Alap in a raga is the opening phase where just the sitar plays by itself and the opening notes. But you, if you listen to any raga, it's, pr it's much the same. It starts very slowly. There's a few notes. Then when the, um, the tabla starts to come in gently, it's what we call the jaw. It's just the, the sort of the, the, the tempo picks up. The jala is when there's a kind of culmination, climax of the improvisation. It, it you know it starts playing very, very, very fast. And then at the end, you've got the uh, gat, which is the sort of like, you know, coming down phase of the raga. So just, you know, at least, you know. Now, um, as I said, Ravi Shankar collaborated with a lot of people, and I want to just highlight a few of them. Now, one of them, one of the most significant collaborations um, was with uh, Yehudi, Yehudi Menuhin, the, uh, the classical uh, violin, uh, violinist. Amazing, amazing uh, trio of records that he released with him. Uh, East meets West, uh, number one. The, second one and obviously there's the third one here with uh, Jean-Pierre Rampal um, these records uh, are they're all fantastic I highly recommend this it's interesting he met Yehudi Menuhin very young they must have been like 12 or 13 or years old each uh, they, they actually met very very young but didn't become friends until they, they were much older but they became like they became the best of friends. I mean, you know, uh, Yehudi Menuhin and Ravi Shankar were like they were best mates basically. So um, these records are there because what's difficult, and this is this was a, a kind of a forward thinking kind of thing, was to actually merge just to classical traditions. How do you merge something? where the established norm is raga, which is based on improvisation largely, 
uh, with something that's highly, you know, highly scripted, like Western classical music. How do you reconcile these things? And that's where this all started, basically. So, you know, if you want to hear the, um, the, you know, the start of, of, of this kind of sound, that, that's where it is. Um, he also collaborated, he also tried to mix Indian music with Japanese music. Uh, his uh, Eats, Greets, East, uh, which came out in 1978, a bit later, uh, in which you have Ala, the great Ala Raka on tabla, uh, plus a Koto and a Shakuachi player, and uh, obviously um, Ravi Shankar, who plays both sitar and tambura on this. Uh, this is fantastic. There's a track on this, which I can't remember which one is. I think it's the improvisation on the theme of Rodukan, the third track, which is freaking mind-blowing. This is absolutely excellent. Um, his friendship with George Harrison was something else as well. I mean, he met George Harrison in the very early, late, late 60s, because um, he, he was living in London at the time. And George Harrison really became one of his best friends and even to the point where you know abandoned himself to you know, yeah, he, he was all about Indian classical music after meeting Ravi Shankar it is it, the way he made music was all driven by that he learned the sitar with uh, Ravi he was a seriously dedicated he wasn't just dabbling in it he was a seriously dedicated student and when you read about this it just actually alters your perception of what George Harrison as a musician was because if you think about him in the Beatles you know he's a good guitar player and there's no doubt that he wrote some great music and he made some great solo albums but that makes me like him more when I read about you know his his dedication and his he was completely absorbed by and so um, this is an interesting little record um, which came out in 1974 on George Harrison's label, Dark Horse. Um, so yeah, uh, here's the, the, the fantastic Dark Horse label. It's called Shankar Family and Friends. Um, and so it's a collaboration record. Side A is just so, so side two is amazing with Dream, Nightmare and Dawn. A musical ballet by Ravi Shankar and it is fantastic but the cast on this is just absolutely incredible um, and this is the insert the insert is beautiful too like a sort of insert they just did a really great job with this um, and on this you have um, amongst you know um, you've you do have sorry I'm just you you've got Obviously, George Harrison and Klaus Vorman. You've got Nodu Mulik, uh, who I've talked about before. And by the way, Nodu Mulik was not only uh, Rav, one of Ravi Shankar's Tempura players, he was also his sitar maker. Nodu Mulik made about six or seven sitars in his lifetime, handmade, and they are top grade instruments. And uh, the sitar that he made for Ravi Shankar, the Ravi Shankar sitar, which is now in the British Museum, is seen to be one of the best instruments ever made. So not only a musician, but a, a master craftsman. Uh, Shiv Kumar Sharma, which I'm going to talk about later. You've got uh, Lakshmi Shankar. You've got El Subramaniam on violin. You've got um, Tom Scott on flute. Um, Jim Keltner on drums. Uh, M M Emil Richard Richards on marimbas. You've got... Um, uh, Ari Prasad Churasia on cowbells, like the Ala Raka on tabla, like this is a who's who, and you've even got uh, Paul Beaver, Malcolm Cecil, and Robert Margulef on Moog synthesizer on this. It's like I've never seen a cast like this. I mean, if you're into Indian music, classical music, rock, everything is in there. It's just it's a stunning record. Um, he tried to uh, fuse. Indian classical music in an orchestral setting and the first time he did it was with André Preva, the, uh, the the classical director and this is seen largely as a as a failed crossover of um, I like this record myself but there's nothing wrong with it personally um, it is a, a concerto for sitar and orchestra 
with the London Symphony, Sym Symphony Orchestra. It's a beautiful, I love this, but purists will say that this is sacrilege, really. Um, the problem with this is that as a, a Western concerto, there's the sitar is, the, the part of the sitar is not really written, it's again an improvisation. But then he teamed up with Indian conductor and wizard Zubin Mehta. And, and, and this, this is a different sort of attempt. Uh, he, uh, they actually scored the sitar, and this is a probably a more faithful. This is a sitar concerto number two, with the London Philharmonic Orchestra, Ragamala. Very, very, very beautiful. And the last collaboration with Ravi I want to show you is uh, is this amazing um, minimalist album that he made with. Uh, Philip Glass, uh, Glass Shankar, uh, Passages, which was not, they sort of worked, but separately and just came together in the end. And the pieces are just, yeah, it's a mix between Indian classical music and the, and the, the, class, the, the minimalist stylings of, of Ravi Shankar, of um, Philip Glass, so it's fantastic. Now, I want to talk about some other uh, so, for example, I'll just me, uh, let me talk about this album here, which I, I think everybody should hear, Call of the Valley. So, I'm just not going to talk about Ravi anymore, I'll just move on a little bit. Call of the Valley, uh, which is a collaboration between Shiv Kumar Sharma, who plays the Centaur, which is like a zither, uh, Brish, Br Brish Brujan Cabra, uh, guitar player and Ari Prisat Shurasya who plays the flute and they they compose this record called Call of the Valley which was very beloved uh, back when it came out I think people like Dylan were big fans of the of this of this album sort of open Indian music to Western ears like Ravi Shankar did uh, these three musicians are incredible and you should probably you know dig into the catalogue for example Harry Prisad Churassia, which I've got here a, a French series on Disque Espérance. Um, um, is he an absolutely spellbinding fl um, flautist? Uh, he, again, in a trio setting with a tabla and tempura as usual. Uh, but again, uh, very similar to the music of Ravi Shankar, but you know, with a different solo instrument. Um, Brish Brujan Cabra, very, very, very interesting musician, actually. Uh, this guy was an Indian slide guitarist. Uh, and I don't, I, it's very interesting. He, when he was very uh, young, he heard a Hawaiian guitar and he convinced his parents to buy him a guitar and then with time modified it and added some sympathetic strings, you know, the droning strings that you get on a sitar and uh, became the, the master of Indian slide guitar, Brish Brujan Cabra, some, a name that you might want to be delving into if, you, if you're interested in it. And here is one, another one of his beautiful records. And this one is with the great Zakir Hussain on tabla, uh, the magic of guitar and tabla. Uh, I mean, it says it, it says it all. Fantastic record. Um, I want to talk about other sitar players that, you know, that are interesting, in my opinion. Um, you have the amazing Nikhil Banerjee. We've got two of his albums. Uh, this is Raga Pillu. And this is, again, the same series as the, uh, the record I've just showed you. Uh, the sitar, the Nikhil Banerjee. Now, Nikhil Banerjee um, was also a student of um, Baba Khan. He, he was also trained by Baba Khan like, like Ravi Shankar. Um, but between all these sitar, sitar players, there, there was a sort of a, a, a rivalry at times, you know. Um, uh, and it's a shame, you know, Nikhil Banerjee was at the time accused to have, you know, stolen ragas written by, by Ravi Shankar. You know, there's some petty stuff there happening, but 
I don't think that should d deter people from listening to uh, these records, especially this Raga Pillu is absolutely wonderful. Uh, amazing records, both of them. Um, Vilayat, Vilayat Khan, Ustad Vilayat Khan. Okay, so here is another great master of Zizah. Uh, some argue he was more technically gifted than, than Ravi Shankar. Now, Ustad Vilayat Khan, Khan was a, a sort of a nemesis of Ravi Shankar. The, he hated the success that Ravi had and he was always making you know, snide comments. Um, they just didn't like each other very much. All the same, wonderful, wonderful sitar player. Very, very highly recommended. And this record here in particular, um, this and this is a beautiful Indian original, which the, it, you can see this the the cover has been actually hand pasted on this. This is a night at the Taj, okay, with Villa Khan and um, uh, with Imrat Khan on Sub Subaha. Subaha uh, Subaha is a, a bass sitar. It's a sitar with yeah a more bassy sound. This is just one of the best. Um, oh my God, this is just gorgeous. I mean, how, how easy it is to find this? I don't know. Uh, it's on uh, his master's voice. Okay, uh, and you've got this duet of just masters. It just takes you on a journey. It's exceptional. Uh, then I need to talk about obviously um, Ali Akbar Khan. Sorry, this video might be a bit longer than one but normal. Um, and as I said, Ali Akbar Khan and Ravi Shankar were raised a little bit like brothers. That's Baba Baba Khan. This is a fantastic uh, concert seventy-two with the great Allah Raka on drums. As I said, the father of Zakir Hussain, but. Really, Zakir Hussain is probably the most famous living um, um, Hindustani musician. I mean, I, I think Harry Prasad Shurasia is also uh, still alive, but his father was arguably he's, he was something else. I mean, I, I Ala Raka people should know people should know this name. Um, so this this is their their uh, you know. Um, in the book, it says that they knew each other so well, they almost had a kind of telepathic kind of understanding together. They, they could play and they didn't need really a lot of cues to play together because they played so often. Um, the 40 minute raga, very, very uh, lovely piece of music as well. If you want a, a beautiful sarod, uh, which is accompanied with a tabla and a tempura again. Uh, because that's what you get normally in an arrangement for a raga. Half Moon, which is also sublime. I mean, all these records are sublime. I'm sorry, but I, I just can't say too much about them because I'm too ignorant to talk about Indian music, but I want to show them to you anyway. It's a beautiful, it's a beautiful record. Um, and finally, uh, this amazing... Um, records morning i think it's called morning and evening ragas look at that for a sleep look at that for a sleep to start with um i think it is called morning and evening ragas from memory uh, everything is in japanese but I, no uh sorry uh pre-dawn to sunrise ragas and morning ragas that's right exactly now also the thing with raga is also it's also a time of the day thing I mean, you've got you know uh, music for the morning, music for the evening, and I want to finish vi this video with uh, a handful of sort of other odds and sods, uh, which are really interesting in my collection. Sitar music uh, with uh, the Bradata Shudari uh, and uh, Fias Khan. So I don't know much about these, but they're, they're fairly cheap. Very these are the, the sort of the. Indian classical music I, I collected in back in long, long time ago and, you know, sort of just kept in my collection because they're wonderful. Here is a wonderful record here. This is the music of India with Pramod Kumar and Zakir Hussain. That's, that's, a, that's a killer record. It's, it's just really, 
deep and spiritual it's uh it's it's an ex excellent record you find it cheap um these maybe not so this is an uh, another indian original uh here is two masters uh, ustan bismalaka another master i mean you know if you talk about real masters and uh vg jog um bismala khan plays the uh Shanai, which is a uh, sort of indian clarinet if you will um if you see the name jugal bandi that means a duet in uh in i think hindi that means it's a duet of musician jugal bandi so there's only two of them playing there there's no uh, percussion no nothing it's jugal bandi here is uh, a wonderful uh, album on Nonsuch Explorer, the music of Northern India uh, uh, with um, Dr. Lalmani Misra, just this for the cover alone, but it's again, it's, it's just totally mind blowing music. I mean, Nonsuch non Explorer series, you know, you can't go wrong. Um, I've shown this tons of time on ECM. This is a wonderful uh, El Shankar, who's to know on ECM with his double, uh, a double neck violin. And I'm going to finish with a couple of, of compilations that I've got here. Uh, and you know, North, Northern Indian music. So that's what we're talking about here in this whole video. Uh, Kashmir and the Valley of the Ganges. Uh, a compilation, like an ethnographic compilation recorded by a guy called Gérard Kremer of various chants and, you know, um, sort of classical pieces. And I'll finish off with this uh, Folkways compilation, which is fantastic. Music of India, traditional and classical. Uh, original Folkways from 19... I don't know, 50... I think it's from 50, no, this is from, oh, sorry, 1966, I'm sorry. Um, so, I don't know how much uh, justice I did to um, Hindustani music, but I wanted to make this video because I thought it was an interesting topic. And uh, all the records I've shown you here are worth seeking out, listening to. Some more than others, I would say, you know, if you've never heard, for example, Call of the Valley, you know, that's, that's a record that you really want to hear. Um, but uh, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, and, uh, you know, talk to me, leave me some comments. Love you all. Cheers.